listen. Da, 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 da. Thanks, guys. For that. <laughs> that was well done. With me. Yeah, yeah. The lift. <laughs> Good work. Um, hey, so we got our equipment working, but you know what's missing? The sound file. So we'll fix that next week. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. I hope you enjoyed our voices three three weeks in a row. Yeah, That's we've right. been doing this on Beyond, too. It's it's a, it's great. I don't think we can ever go back to the regular sound. <laughs> Let you vote in the comments. Let us know. Should we keep having to do voiceovers, or should we get the actual sound back? No, I want the you, actual sound back. That's how you end up with a podcast called, like, Podcast McPodcasty Face or something like yep. that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, welcome to NBC, IGN's Nintendo podcast. I'm your host, Casey DeFridis, and I am here today with Tom Mark. Hello. Pear Schneider. Listen. And Brian Altano. Hello. Hey, guys. Brian, your video of you swimming with gators finally went up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I saw it That's this right. morning. Uh, or as Casey knows it as, the video where I went to Florida and didn't eat a pub sub. That one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> How did they make the gator look like it was alive? It I mean, was The guy real. was pushing it. Was it. Real it's real. Gator. He has like a handle. It's a real gator. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real gator. You can look up videos online. Uh, th- this is an actual real alligator. We brought our Nintendo Switches into the water, which is actually uh, scary. It was, was it your own? No. Okay. No, they were loners. We had to bring them back. We actually returned them to Best Buy afterwards. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Best Buy, no. (laughs) That's really funny. Um, (laughs) With like alligator water on them. (laughs) Sorry. I probably shouldn't have said that. I don't care. (laughs) That Um, increases their value. No, I know. I know. Uh, No, so we, Max Max Scoville and I went to Florida. And uh, so there's this horror movie coming out called Crawl. And uh, the studio behind it was like, hey, we want you guys to make a video about the movie uh, where you like basically face your fears with alligators. And we did some scouting. We found a place in South Florida in Homestead, <laughs> at this place called Everglades Outpost, where a man yeah. named Chris Gillette, who is on a show called Gator Boys, uh, has been working with and, and sort of not training. I think that's the word for it. Hab- habitualizing. <laughs> What's the... What's the word for domestic domesticating? Hugging. Uh, yeah, I guess training. Getting cool, okay. with, getting cool with gators yeah. for like yeah. for years now. Uh, what's no? It's um. There is it socializing. Socializing, now? yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he has been rescuing nuisance gators from backyards and highways and pools and all over places all over Florida. That's uh, nice. Oh, this yeah. is a gator with history. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. A real and nuisance so gator. I went into the water <laughs> with a gator named Casper, who is two hundred and sixty pounds and mm-hmm. ten feet long. And real, very real. Hmm. Uh, Allegedly. Ale- no, he's definitely real. And um, we brought our Nintendo Switches, and uh, Max Goble and I went back to back, and we played a couple rounds of Mortal Kombat <laughs> against each other. And then afterwards, when the shoot was done, uh, we put on weight belts and went underwater with uh, snorkeling goggles on, and the gator swam over us. And cool. all did, my arms and legs are still here. So did the gator happy. ever like look at you going, like, who are you? Or like, yeah. was it interested, or was it just kind of like floating by no it was definitely like it got it got close to us the scariest part of the shoot was like there was four or five other gators just chilling on the side and one of them at one point just like snuck into the water and oh. they had to come over and be like oh there's there's another one. <laughs> oh, we were like where and that, they're like well if you can't see him you have to be w- worried yeah that we call that one bitey yeah oh, and no? actually her name was saw <laughs> <laughs> not a good thing. Yeah. And she was crazy eyed. She's just like, ah. <laughs> and so, yeah, go, p- the, go right. watch that video. It's on YouTube. They but. probably looked at them just long enough to decide those guys are too big to. Yeah. Bother eating them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. It's This is weirdly the second time we brought our Nintendo Switches to Florida for uh, a, an IGN video shoot. So that's just a, uh, somehow it keeps happening in my career. All right. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for Welcome back. telling us with that story. Of course. <laughs> sorry for hogging up too much time, and I'm sorry I didn't get the pub sub sandwich. I promise you I will. So many people have tweeted pictures of those things. I'm so me. sorry, Brian. They look so good. <laughs> it's not helping anything. It's not even just like you missed this. It's like, look what you missed, and that's, that hurts. I'm sorry. It's chicken tender sandwiches. That looks <laughs> They great. also have pretty good red velvet cake. Stop as far it. As I'm really? hungry. Go. Yeah, they <sighs> use actual cream cheese frosting. I'm sorry. <laughs> She always does. We're recording right before lunch. I know. It's killing me. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, half the year is done. That's right. Which is oh crazy. My God. It is now it's the first week of uh, July, which is also 4th of July. <laughs> and um, this is probably going to go up early. So if you're listening now, it's it's earlier than it usually would be. That's Ooh. true. Yeah. Congratulations. Sneak peek. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy, <laughs> to happy you. 4th of so, July. And thanks for letting me live in your country. Sure. Thank <laughs> you for living yeah. in our country. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for showing up. I also only live here. Thanks for, um, thanks for getting together with your friends and making IGN. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's you. <laughs> I don't know what that, that expression means. That, that was nice of you. <laughs> so I figured we would um, take a few minutes to talk about our favorite Switch games so far. And then we're going to talk about 
what games coming out this year could possibly dethrone our current favorites. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go over some news, like uh, it's Splatoon's final Splat Splatfest uh, this month. They announced a new Harvest Moon remake is coming out. Uh, the Pokemon Company actually released a statement on that po- National Dex nonsense wow. and a bunch of other stuff. But let's talk about our favorite games so far. Let's do it. It's been six months. Tom. Putting me on the spot here. Brian. Uh, Hollow Knight no, no, was no, no. last year. Yeah, Hollow Knight, Knight was is last not year. this year. No, no, no. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Silk Song. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not out yet, Tom. No, it's yep. not. It's. I d- doubt that's going to come out in 2019, but that's a whole other discussion, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. I think that it. My front runners of this year so far for Switch of things that have come out this year specifically on Switch uh, is probably Slay the Spire and Super Mario Maker 2. And of course, we have to say that uh, Humble publishes Slay the Spire on Switch, and yep. so, but we operate independently from them. Ziff Davis owns Humble also, but they don't influence and influence us in any way. And like I, uh, since they only publish the console versions, I'm pretty sure I actually. I, I liked it before Humble was involved. Just, mm-hmm. yeah. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm a hit. Slay the Spire hit. So I actually right, have yeah. some, some video playing up from yeah. the review, Tom. Uh, uh, Slay the Spire is, Spire. is I, I was, it's got a, like little performancey things here and there uh, on Switch, but um, I am pretty impressed with how much I fell back into it now that it's handheld because it is so wonderfully structured for a handheld system, especially one that you can immediately put to sleep because everything is turn-based and everything will wait for you to take your actions if you want to just pause it in the middle of any sort of anything you can just leave and go do something else and the game will just be there for you when you want to come back to that it. rules mm-hmm. um so yeah I, that one is probably the one that is my favorite game of this year so far but you know same here i'm just gonna yeah piggyback so piggyback. that i can keep this video playing and not have to switch back and forth um but mm-hmm. also i know i've mentioned a lot and you've mentioned a lot i think so I finally got my two weeks marks, two two week mark with this game, and I've played forty five hours. Woo. Um, and that's a part time job. Man, mm-hmm. I I really like it. Um, I like none of it is mindless. The only part of it that is mindless is maybe the first couple of fights in any run with your basic mm-hmm. um, cards. But as soon as you start building up your deck, you always have to think about what you're doing. And I'm doing a surprising amount of math because I want to be as meta as possible and have perfect turns. Like, well, exactly how much damage do I have to do to this enemy? And then to have as many resources as possible left over to spend on the other enemies. Yep. And there's a lot of that give and take of, of doing the math where those decisions that you make, like you said, all of those decisions really matter. The, the decision in an early turn of, okay, can I take five damage this turn to deal an extra six can mm-hmm. make the difference yes. between not even just winning a fight that fight but like winning a fight uh, of an entire chapter down the line mm-hmm. almost and because, you're suddenly on the boss and yeah. if you could just had have had five more health would you win yeah. sort of stuff and that's is the thing, really you interesting don't, only the ironclad heals after fights and the ironclad only heals six hp so yeah. health is very important <laughs> yeah yeah uh the other thing though I, I and i would be remiss to say this because i think this one will be a little bit more of a slow burn for me in terms of interest is mario maker yeah mm-hmm. which i'm loving the story mode has been a blast the uh the level that level editor i haven't gone into quite as much yet just because it is a very time consuming thing to build levels um or at least levels i'm happy with yep um but the the uh this is going to be a game that I just keep playing, right? Like, I love the story mode so far. I really, really like the levels that they're showing off. And then this is just going to grow and grow and grow and get better and better and better. And the levels are going to get more refined. And the mm-hmm. best ones are going to come to the yep. top more and more. And I'm really, really excited for that. And I think that Slay the Spire could fall to it eventually. It's just not immediately. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I've i crushed through the single-player mm-hmm. campaign over the weekend, which is 110, 15, 20 levels or something crazy like that. And it's the, you know, you guys have all seen, it's it's that castle disappears. Um, I won't spoil why, it's very adorable. Um, and you have to rebuild it using coins that you collect for taking on these jobs, which are essentially the most, 100 most insane official legal Super Mario levels that Nintendo has ever made. They're just <laughs> com- 
completely insane. Uh, it's definitely, it feels like they have like this very young, energized group of designers there who are just going completely nuts and doing whatever they want to do. And the 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 world, the game, the level's not being tethered to like worlds or specific like, oh, it's Fire World or like, you know, it's Poison Land or, you know, Donut Hills. <laughs> Means they, that every single other level is just completely different than the last one. There's really smart puzzle levels, really smart platforming levels, um, just really frantic, difficult, sort of like twitchy challenge stuff. Yeah. And it gets a uh, it gets really nuts, and you sort of poke around this world, and there's these little ancillary characters that pop up and give you jobs, and like a bird and a frog and all these other things. And little by little, you ch- chip away at this world. And I finished them over the weekend, then immediately jumped into the, some of the user generated stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's insane that you just hit refresh, and there's just hundreds of more levels. Like mm-hmm. this game is selling incredibly well. It's immensely popular. It's exactly what we wanted to see happen. I, I bought like a six dollar Amazon Basic stylus um to start making my own levels and touchscreen and it works brilliantly yeah so i Good. suggest you do that um just go on amazon type in amazon stylus it's super or type in switch too just make sure you yeah. get the right one <laughs> yeah. the thing i love about the story mode is how they they set up the variety of the levels in a way that it actually teaches you about game design it's yeah. really mm-hmm. smart like you'll uh one of the first puzzle levels you encounter kind of sections off the puzzles and like places little hint markers like they they put like a a mushroom on the ground to show you, you know, the little background mushroom, show you that, oh, there's a hidden switch there. There's a hidden question block uh, there. They're so smart about, like, kind of teaching you the language of yeah. how they design stuff. Or they always put the above the pipe, there's always the hidden block to get you the the one up, right? Like, they, they'll they just kind of consistently teach you the language of, of past Mario games. And yeah. Just think it's so impressive how they set it up. No, it's a really special game, and it's only just getting started. I can't wait to see where this goes. I, I got really rusty in making levels. I made one level. Yeah. I haven't up- uploaded it yet. I'll, I'll do that in a, in a minute when we're done here. But um, I went back to Super Mario Maker on my Wii U just to kind of look at my old levels, and they were all wiped out. <laughs> oh man! I don't know why. Like, shouldn't they be locally saved or something? I don't know. What I happened, really, I wanted to but... find the level I made that I challenged Jose Otero with a couple years ago because mm-hmm. it was like so much fun. Yeah. Um, and I have no idea where that is, so I just actually might go watch that YouTube video. Yeah. And recreate, <laughs> recreate? it. Recreate. And funny. then I'll post it for everybody. I'm super Do bummed it. we didn't get the uh, Mario stylus in America, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If anyone's listening and they have one of those and they don't want it, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it off your hands. Nice. Yeah. This was this was definitely uh, kind of. Not quite a best case scenario just because of the multiplayer stuff being a little annoying, but this was as close to what I wanted from mm. this game as possible. I, I have one big com- complaint. I, I feel like, you know, because I went back to the Wii U version and played around with it, I feel like the creation tools, it doesn't feel as good. And I mm. think some of the the shortcuts in the handheld mode without using a, a, the touchscreen aren't that Great. I mm-hmm. feel like there's there's room for an in, for improvement here with menu usage and how you get to some of the sub menus. And some of that may just be because you know I'm used to the Wii U creation tools. Jumping into these, um, you know, you don't have the I don't have that stylus like you. Um, and I don't know how, how to get a stylus. <laughs> Seems like an impossible task for me to solve. Um, no, I'll, I, I will def- I'll definitely any, well, get one. Any stylus that works on yeah. the iPhone or Android will yeah. also work on the Switch. But, but then I love um, I love all the stuff that's added and just the kind of the separate setup for the uh, the Super Mario. You know, the, all, all the kind of like the cat abilities. Um, I was curious that they separated it out completely. Yeah. Um, because I feel like there could have been a way to make that work, but it is. Uh, I understand, like the you know the cat. Power up just makes you makes it so easy to beat certain things. It, you, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that over the weekend about how this game sort of feels like uh, like the way Smash Brothers celebrates Nintendo and mm-hmm. video games in general. This this celebrates Mario, mm. and there's so many little like there's like music from Sunshine comes in and a power oh, yeah. up from Mario Land and all this other fun stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but so far so good. I'm like this is my second mm-hmm. favorite game so far this year already. So mm-hmm. we'll see how that develops. W- one thing Pick I Ross. will say real quick on the on the controller touching thing. Yeah, Picross S3 is. Every Everyone's actual yeah. answer. Yeah. Uh, on the touching, this controls not being quite right. Man, there's a lot of things that the Wii U gamepad was bad and right? clunky and dumb for, but there were just some games that I honestly don't think you can recreate or port as well outside of that gamepad. I, I was yeah. just wishing that we had that feature with the Catan game because I tried to play that mm. locally and oh. you can't because yeah. you can't. There's no way to hide your card yeah. from, uh-huh. from other and people. It, it not just that, like. I love, I'm super excited for whatever Pikmin 4 is going to be, if that is still in development, who knows anymore, but 
it's going to be hard to go back to not using a touchpad and not having the map on a touchpad like that while you can see the game uh, if, if for that game. And in the similar thing with Mario Maker. Mario Maker without that touchscreen is just like... Uh, without the separate touchscreen, that is, it's just like a little bit clunkier. Yeah, they did a lot of things really the, right. I mean, the truth about the Wii U is like most games didn't need that setup, no. right? And then it came with all these different limitations, and and then because of that setup and the, what the console was, most games also didn't come to the Wii U. Yeah, but there were these few examples of titles where you just couldn't get rid of the, well, the it, gamepad. It was mostly ignored, oh. which is fine. Um, but it was also when it was utilized, it was great. And then sometimes mm -hmm. it just straight up got in the way, like Star Fox. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yes. Yep. Totally agree. Anyway, that was a tangent. I apologize. So, totally. so, so yours is still yours is still um, Slay, the, Slay the, Spire. the Spire. Currently, I think mine is Slay the Spire, then Mario Maker. Yeah. Okay. okay. So mine's and, War Groove. Okay. Ooh. And I um, just also want to mention that Slay the Spire and Mar Super Mario Maker are the only two new games on Switch that are in the nines. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's exactly well, what that, I. Whoever well, I reviewed <laughs> whoever reviewed War Groove crimin criminally underrated it. <laughs> what did we give it? What did you I, give it, I, Tom? I gave it a, a, an 8.5. An 8.5. Who would be stupid enough to do that? Uh, well, you know. No. So, I, <laughs> look, I, I, I admit that I'm, you know, I arrived at this game really wanting a new Advance Wars game. Right. I, lo I love those games. I love the setup of those games. And to me, they're, they're so different fi from Fire Emblem, the way they feel, like how you don't really care about your characters. It's all about like spawning troops rather than uh, you know defending your heroes. This game kind of merges those two things. Um, and uh, no, I just love this game. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought there were many really really cool missions in this. I thought there was a, a lot of content. You know, even when you finish the main quest, there's still uh, challenges to resolve, and it it just kind of highlighted how sad it is when you're missing a a franchise from the past that you love, and how it's great that you know Nintendo is open to somebody else exploring this without sending them a cease and desist because <laughs> this is an Advance Wars clone with a medieval skin. It's yeah. cool that we got that and Bloodstained in the same. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's like, another example oh, yeah. where it's like spiritual successors that are sort of carrying the torch of a of a long begone franchise yep, yep. <laughs> long begone um <laughs> and then of course my number three is Picross s3 that yeah. should be um great game i just finished Even though mega Picross is still a chore who is that for like it's a it's when you're done with everything and now the developer punishes you yeah weird dudes yes. love that i that literally like... i literally just finished all the other puzzles this weekend <laughs> yeah. and started mega picross on in s3 on yeah. the train like, you did the color one ago yeah i did all the color mm. ones and i was like all right <laughs> <laughs> and do you like it yeah yeah i don't like, dislike it yeah, it's like yeah. fine it's, right? it's fun it's good pick ross it's just like not nearly as appealing as the right other stuff. right right it's really it's really uh like failure by association more than anything else yeah no it's like it's it's just a weird version of pick ross that sort of like breaks a lot of the rules and a lot of the things i like about it but mm -hmm. it's more so if you want more of what you're playing, it's there, <laughs> but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good. You, you know, I, I was just one final thought on War Groove and yeah. where it's different from Fire Emblem. And like overall, the Fire Emblem series I, is dear to my heart, and I love those games. But whenever you play a Fire Emblem game, even till the last minute of each mission, you're still worried about your heroes, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. every character is a named character, and I play with permadeath, and when they get killed you have to either redo or do the little cheaty wheel whatever um take back a move <laughs> um you don't have this this in the advanced wars games and in war groove and like when you turn the tide and you're getting the upper hand over the enemy it's just like i love that feeling it's like that final level in half-life where you have all the powers in the world <laughs> you're like yeah i'm cleaning up and it almost becomes this little sadistic end game where like i'm gonna take everybody <laughs> oh, out no. that's I, I really love those moments in strategy games right where, mm. right where you know like i put the cigar in my mouth and i say i love it when a plan that's, comes together i kind of mm -hmm. get that feeling from slay the spire a lot when you get your deck like into a really good spot and then mm -hmm. you're killing things in like two two turns mm -hmm. it's a good feeling yep mm -hmm. no, <laughs> how i feel it. when i get the star in mario <laughs> <laughs> more games need that mm -hmm. brian what's your favorite game so far uh so a lot of the ones we named have been excellent um and i completely agree uh, but i think and besides resident evil 4 which is a game i crushed through three times it's just stupid how many times i play i got th I, I got that game right before like two cross-country flights and just played it non-stop and beat it, it and then beat it on pro mode oh and, man well you've yeah. beaten it beaten it on switch three times yeah oh what? i thought you meant like 
overall. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, overall, I probably finished that game like 25 times total. Oh, Jeez. my God. On Switch, I played it straight through, and then I played it straight through on professional mode, and then when you beat it on professional mode, you get the Lost Plagas removal gun, which is just like, it's totally cheap, but it's awesome, and this gimmicky gun, speaking of feeling overpowered, where you walk in a room and you fire it, and it immediately like <laughs> auto-lasers to every enemy on screen and kills them in one hit. <laughs> So the third time is basically just you running through the game being like, ha ha, I'm a <laughs> superhero. the revenge mode. Yeah. yeah. And also you unlock all the campy, stupid, doofy costumes by then. Mm -hmm. So like you're dressed as a 1920s gangster and, and Ashley's dressed as a knight. <laughs> like just <laughs> nonsense. Um, so that was a really good one. I really I really loved uh, Gato Roboto for yeah. totally mm -hmm. different reasons, which is a, a super – did you play it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's awesome. It's um, I don't think I get to talk about it on the show. It's like a four, five-hour long – um, 2D Metroidvania game at the most. It took it took me like three and a half. Yeah. Okay. Like, and so it's it it you can totally fly through this game quickly. Uh, the the art and music is really gorgeous. Even though it's as you can if you're watching the video, it's very rudimentary. It's most of the game doesn't have any color. You can unlock these like cartridges that will mm -hmm. let you change the color palette. But even then, it's never more than like two or three colors in in the whole game. You're a tiny cat that eff effectively jumps in a mech suit and wrecks shop through an alien planet. Mm -hmm. uh, my gripes with this game is it has very arbitrary difficulty spikes in certain oh. sections, especially the bosses. The bosses are two to three times more difficult than anything else in any part of the game. It's yeah. ridiculous. Like you'll be kind of just like flying through this game and kicking ass and then you get to a boss and he just destroys you for like an hour. But usually the checkpoint's right there so it's pretty easy to jump back in. But. And also there's uh, there's one little problem with the boss in difficulty in, in the the perception of how you're doing too because instead of just being you know x amount of hits or life or whatever the boss's health bar is like kind of like an original mega man where it's like all those teeny tiny little discs in yep. a row right and it's like a hundred of those yeah. and your basic attack deals like one at a time and so like even if you're dealing damage it feels very much like you're not like it's it's hard to perceive how much damage you're doing which i think is honestly just like a ui problem more yeah. than a balance problem yeah the boss fights get long and when you're at the very end and you die and you have to do it all over again it's tiring but there's not a ton of them and the world's really fun to explore there's mm -hmm. lots of secrets it's a cheap game too um yeah please check this one out it's also uh i, I was interested because it's it's being called a meowtroidvania yep. right mm -hmm. yeah. which is like Words getting don't comparisons. Matter anymore. Yeah. <laughs> getting comparisons to the metroidvania genre but like it's actually sort of funny how much I didn't think it was much of that. The levels have a lot of little secrets that you can go back to, yep. but there's not a really a lot of backtracking. It's, no, not it really. It feels like you can just play it as a linear game and you're not really going to miss out on much as long as you're still looking for secrets along the way. Totally. This feels like something that would have fit right at home on like the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, it's exactly. Like this very quaint, tight, intimate little Metroid game and it's not entirely backtracky, but I think it's being com compared to a Metroidvania because the alien planets and enemies feel Metroid-y. That and also they wanted to say Meowtroidvania. Yeah. And there's elevators. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which everybody loves. So, yeah, those are our favorite games so far in the six months. Um, so I also have this list here for, for reference, just all the games um, between eight and nine. Uh, we're actually coming out with a video feature, I think, next week with all of these games. So I won't spoil it for you yet. But what do you guys think about the year so far? Um, I... I I mean, there are obviously some really fun uh, games to play on the Switch, and I'm I'm very, you know, by my own pick, you you can tell I picked an indie game. I'm very happy that the indie scene is so alive and well. And even yeah. even some games like Cadence of Hyrule that didn't click with me the way that I thought it would just because of the Zelda theme, like I'm happy that I get to play these. I'm happy to see games like CTR being, uh, um, you know, Crash Team Racing being ported, um, seeing stuff like um, Cuphead come over. But I think it's a little bit of a weak year. Like when you're, you know, when you your core Nintendo first party titles are are Yoshi, Yoshi's Crafted World, which I thought was good, but not not great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. then a remake of New Super Mario Brothers. U. I feel like we're missing that like that big title in the first half. And we do year. know that the second half of the year is a little bit more stacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite and it's, a lot. No, this is this has been like a sort of like a tapas restaurant mm -hmm. type of year where there's just like hundreds of tiny little plates mm -hmm. and they're great, but there's no like big steak dinner here well, and there. Well, that's the thing. Not yet at least. That's yeah. the thing in this era of games, and this was true of 2018 as it is of 2019, is there's no such thing as a slow 
week. Yeah. There's no such yeah. thing as a slow month. There's no such thing as a slow year anymore. There are constantly games coming out, and often, more often than not, there's constantly good games coming out. Yeah. It's just that, yeah, this year doesn't feel like, even though there's been a lot of fun stuff, it doesn't feel like there's been many just like bangers out yeah. there. And yep. that's, if you go back to last year, and you know, Sony, ha- Sony dropped God of War in the first <laughs> quarter, basically, of the year, which was insane. Like, yeah. to have a game that would otherwise be a, a system seller or like a, you know, Q4 big holiday title that early in the year, I, I think that set the tone for last year, and I feel like this year is a little bit slower across all the I different mean, platforms. Monster Hunter World came out last year in January yep. as well. Yeah, you had that. No, I mean, so Resident Evil remake, Sony, I guess. Sony had... But not, not that that much big stuff from the other guys. Yeah, no, Sony had God of War and Mm -hmm. Spider-Man essentially back to back and it Mm -hmm. was, that was their version of like having Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild Mm -hmm. so close to each other. It was like, that was a big year for them. But yeah, you're right. This year, I think across the board for everybody has been sort of a a lot of the studios are sort of winding down Mm -hmm. and they're getting ready for next gen but Mm -hmm. there has been a tremendous outpouring of awesome games on switch they've mm-hmm. also just sort of been small you know yeah i mean the next big ones coming up after mario maker which admittedly is a, a very big game is you know we've pokemon Link's fire awakening emblem. fire emblem luigi's mansion luigi's mansion which we don't have a release date yet for but we know it's this year and they released the box art for it too yeah yeah exactly it has luigi on it and Gooigi, and, Gooigi. and he's upside mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. r.i.p animal crossing also there's a new box art for <laughs> Link's awakening and it's, it's <laughs> very good it's really good <laughs> So, what games coming out this year could possibly dethrone your current favorites? Ha, huh, that's easy. All right, Perry. Zelda. Link's Awakening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well. I'm biased, oh but yeah, that's the one. Just playing that for the short 20 minutes was the demo, right? For the mm-hmm. short 20 minutes, just I, I just wanted to take it home and hug it. Yep. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's so cute. It's like, I, I know the game very well. I love the game. I just want to replay it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really sweet. Um tracking down the collector's edition in Europe has been a nightmare that has brought me back to the old yeah. the old amiibo days. Yeah. Uh, so that's been tough, but no, I'm I'm really excited for this one obviously. And 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 um also like Marvel Ultimate Alliance I think okay. is going to be a, like that that's out in just could, a few weeks yeah, and I think that's going to be a really, really fun, fun could, local co-op game. Yeah, it could be good. And then I you know, it's it's rare that I, I just love Zelda games so much. It's rare that another game can unseat um, a Zelda title um, for me. But Luigi's Mansion, I was completely surprised by right? yeah. how much fun it was when I played it. I, I my short time with it, I enjoyed it a lot more than the original and the sequel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's just so much more d- dynamic and actiony now. Like it's just there's and there's the great puzzles and kicking, beating up ghosts feels great. Like and, it's and the time. craft. Like somebody's actually programming to the strengths and the limitations of the switch. It looks fantastic. Yep. The the room design and everything, the lighting, the just the the feel of slamming the ghosts on the ground. It just has a really <laughs> good feel. What yeah. about you guys? Yeah, Tom? Well, I'm looking forward to Luigi's Mansion as well. Um, I think that that game, I don't know if it will dethrone, but I think it has the opportunity to, depending on kind of the, mm-hmm. for me, it's going to be a question of the scope. If everything is as sort of intimate and dollhousey as the demo felt, I might be a little bummed, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I agree. I loved, loved, loved that demo, so I'm... I'm just excited for, to see what the the scope and scale of that game is like as a whole. Um, is Hollow Knight 2 coming out this year? We don't know yet. Silk Song yeah. is, uh, they just said coming soon. And mm. we. Uh, my prediction is next year because it seems so close to the original already. And yeah. like what they showed at E3 was really, really polished. But mm-hmm. of course, it's an E3 demo and probably it was what they had polished, right? Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't count on that one being this year. And then Legend of Brave Yamada 2, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> is that a thing? That is that is going to be a thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That's very exciting, actually. We don't know when. I've, I've still been enjoying that game. Yeah, um, uh, Yeah, the other things that can be thrown for me are uh, Fire Emblem, if it is done well. Again, that's another one of those games where I'm like... It could be oh really God, good. I forgot about Fire Emblem. What, what am I doing? Fire Emblem is that's right. Less month. than a month oh away. Gosh, yeah, I'm really excited for Fire yeah. Emblem. No, that's uh, yeah, yeah. That those what those, happened to those the year? three games for sure. <laughs> yeah, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Three Houses is 
I think at this point, it's going to be like three weeks away. A little over three weeks. Oh, my Lord. Very, very close. Wait, that game is three weeks away? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Something like that. Yeah. Around there. And we had we talked about it. Brendan was on the show and talked about it at length. And mm-hmm. everything he talked about, I, I got more excited for the title. So, yeah. I'm, geez, yeah. We've I'm, got that. We've got Pokemon also coming out. Pokemon is the other one for me, actually. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm excited for Link's Awakening, but... Have without the historical context of it, it is hard for me to get like crazy excited up for it, right? Because mm-hmm. I've never played it. Yeah, I um, mean, it's it's my most anticipated game this year, but also it's a complete and total known quantity for me. And right. digging around in the margins and watching videos, there's a bunch of stuff that's new, but it's not an overhaul. It's not like this is you know we've taken a game that it's not like a, a Resident Evil Two style remake where they've remixed the entire you know, mm-hmm. yeah but I narrative I love Zelda games Zelda games are the ones that I consistently beat I think more than any other game I think mm-hmm. I've beaten basically every Zelda game I've played which is like. I don't always beat the games I play. Right? That's because they don't fizzle. I think when they design yeah. them, they really create that that narrative where sometimes the last dungeon in the game may be the best one in Zelda, whereas in other games it's not. Yeah, you know, yeah, Skyward yeah. Sword is the only Zelda game I've never finished. You should. I love I, that I'd game love to go there. back. Good, good, really? Good, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good story beat. Barrett, Barrett mm-hmm. Courtney and Andrew Goldfarb, two IGN alums, were <laughs> were hating on that game on Twitter the other day. Yes. Did Barrett uh, just finish it? I think he did, yeah. and he played through it because he's trying to play through all the the Zelda games, which is yeah. great for him. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they. I, I don't. I don't know when the narrative flipped on that game. It says uh, suddenly everyone thought it was terrible, but like I really enjoy. Skyward Sword. I, it's, I think it's definitely one of the weaker, I mean, it probably is the weakest modern console 3D Zelda. Yes. It is the weakest one. Oh, by far. For sure. Yeah. Um, whereas, I, like, I actually think, I liked it better than, you know, some of the 3DS um, titles. I mean, I like think Spirit that tracks. we don't have to get too deep into this, but I th- the issue with that game is not just the motion controls. It's the it's the sort of cumbersome, frustrating pacing that happens yeah. in between the dowsing and like the overworld is the overworld is, is gone. It, it's yeah, it's a bunch it's, of clouds. I need to I need to go back and replay it then mm-hmm. because my response to that would be: Do you remember the second half of Wind Waker? Because everyone loves Wind Waker, and the second half of Wind Waker, where you're looking for the Triforce pieces, is a bad video game. So did well, you replay the remake though? Yeah, because they, yeah. they, they streamlined fixed that. that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, that, that was I what I did. Is I rebeat it. With oh, I, I didn't play the remake because uh-huh. they removed the option to invert your controls when aiming. So oh, Ooh, I really? got yeah. I got my like hookshot thing. I don't remember what it's called, and like, then I quit because I couldn't invert the controls. Like an unreasonable oh. reaction. No, oh, no, not at all. I, I understand that because it's no. Nope. If you're used to if you're used to inverted. <laughs> In the same way where the like, original game was inverted you, only, and yeah. now they flipped it. Casey. If a video game forced me learn. to play no. inverted, no. I don't think I would be able to play it. the The problem with that is that it then ruins my um mind, like memory connection for every other game that I play. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, no. Telltale's The Walking Dead did the same thing. You can invert your controls, and it just like ruined it for me. I hate it so well, much. Why don't they just make that was option everywhere? Camera controls were essential to succeeding in that game. It was, no, it's like, <laughs> no, here's the thing. Sometimes it'd be like story mode, story mode, story mode, and all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, there's something coming at you, use your gun. Oh, I and see. Yeah, no, that's react right. super quickly. Okay. Yep. And then I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, so Casey could not totally remember that place. when it came to the reversed controls. No. It's well, just like, it's a like muscle memory okay. like thing. It's just like an automatic <sighs> reflex. Mm-hmm. You know what game is going to have camera controls that's new and hopefully you can invert them? What? Pokemon. Well, yes, if they can't, I'm it's 0 out of 10. <laughs> Automatically, you wow. know what? I, I again said the a same, reasonable reaction. I said the same thing about last. Check out Guardian. our review this fall. <laughs> last mm-hmm. Guardian has the um, one item that you cannot invert when using it. What? And, mm-hmm. Like it's like the first thing you pick up, and I was like, well, not going to play this game. But you almost never use that. Have item you ever talked game. to somebody like a professional about this issue? I just like my I feel like control. I feel like we we have to do like a training sequence with they, Casey they did where a, we, no there was a study and inverted controls makes more sense with the human brain than regular controls who do, who ran this study they this, they this, didn't it care. was they it Harvard was big inversion it was the giant ants them <laughs> It's dated like, 50s it, it's sci-fi Casey with like a, a like a, a lab coat and a mustache on, and it just mm-hmm. falls off halfway, and she's like, "Ah!" Oh, and runs out of. Her. I like that you. That's true. I like that you have your sources, Casey. That's great. I'll find those sources mm. and I'll present. A, I do. I'll do a presentation. I'll book a meeting room. And be like so presentation. Given these That's limitations cool. with controls, what do you think will unseat your favorite Slay the Spire this year? Um, possibly 
probably Monster Hunter World Iceborne, but that's not coming out to the Switch. That's so not a Switch game. It's not, not yet. a Switch game. It's never going to be a Switch game. Never say never. <laughs> Witcher. We are getting the Witcher. <laughs> um. You could get a blurry version of your favorite game mm-hmm. uh, available anywhere you are this, on this Nintendo is, Switch. This is true. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Like, of no. course it's Pokemon. It, I'm pretty sure it'll you, be Pokemon. You but only care I, about Pokemon. I care about a lot of things. Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, Link's Awakening looks really good. I really enjoyed playing it. I think it, so. Digimon Survive is supposed to come out this year, and that looks really cool. Not related to Metal Gear Survive. No. Okay. Hmm. Oh, really? It's, uh, yeah. It's. I gotta um, go to GameStop and cancel my pre-order. This is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I honestly, there's not a whole lot of information out about it yet. But they announced it last year, and it's a SRPG. But you have to make decisions, and they stick to the game. And change the way your Digimon evolve, and like I think there's permadeath and stuff. I don't know. It looks wow. interesting. The Digimon art, got the dark. art looks really cool. I Wait, mean, what's here? I, SRPG? I, can bring this up. I don't know. Strategy standard. I think it's t- it's top down, right? Yes. So it's like a turn based game, turn based strategy. Yeah. Okay. Turn based okay. strategy game. I wonder. If I don't I think I've ever heard of this. You can kind of see. Like there it is. A, a picture the cool, of the art. Only the cool kids. But that's like it. That's like this is like all we know. And up. so the very ca- pretty. you will go on dates with these dinosaurs, and they'll remember everything you say. And then if you say something wrong, yeah. you die. Tactical. Forever. They'll remember that. I think that's a great idea. It's a good idea for a game. But uh, yeah, I don't, a darker tale about survival and friendship. I'm down. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, about hunting monsters and over a hundred Digimon guys. Casey, Sweet. I'm actually really excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield this year because it's not going to come out like a week and a half before a Smash Brothers game. <laughs> so, oh, that's good. Yep. There's there are no other games coming out after that that I'm yeah. excited for, and I'm very excited for that. Which is great because like I I actually might finish this one. I got like 15 or 10 or 15, 10 or 12 hours into the last one, and then just dropped it when Smash Brothers came out. And I was super into yeah. it. I bet some new stuff is going to be announced. Still. My uh, like, my box 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 boy. I'm I'm <laughs> good on those. I think we've got quite enough of the box boys and girls hmm. and girls. My mm-hmm. brother, and their baby. They have a box baby. Excuse box me, people. My goodness, they do. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that now. Uh, my brother lives out of town, and when we found out the Pokemon release date, he was like, man, it's a shame I'm not coming back for Thanksgiving so we could just play Pokemon because Thanksgiving is hmm. right after the Pokemon release. Uh, so I'm just going to him for Thanksgiving, and we're just awesome. going to spend a week making pie and playing Pokemon and not leaving the house. That's, that's wonderful. That's going to be glorious. Which not- Pokemon is most like a Thanksgiving turkey? Isn't, is there not a turkey Pokemon? I don't think there is a turkey Pokemon. Really? I guess Farfetch is a duck. Some What's a good, duck yeah? For, for Thanksgiving. And they got the leak. They a brought their own, brought their own <laughs> stuffing. Yeah. Leak for cooking. Yeah. yeah. That's is right. there? There's no like large bird Pokemon that would be great for roasting. Oh, oh. There are, there's a. There are this pheasant. is a question for Miranda. If there, like. there are pheasant Pokemon. That, that sounds, that's sounds great. Not close really, enough. I don't know. I would eat mm-hmm. a Pokemon pheasant on Thanksgiving. Turducklet. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. I feel bad about that. One. No, that's great. It sounds delicious. <laughs> I'm into it. Um, so I, w- we, I would eat most Pokemons. Oh, and I, we, I completely forgot about Astral Chain too. I think that might be really. Mm. Oh yeah, that's looking good yeah. too. I don't, man. I'm, I'm holding my. Yeah, a lot of games coming. I'm out holding my opinion about Astral Chain back, not because I think it's going to be bad. I think it looks really cool, mm-hmm. but I don't know enough about it yet. Yeah. And yeah. Right. Platinum has proved that they don't always make bangers <laughs> they can they are make mash too they're very very good mm-hmm. at making great games but they're also ca- make some okay stuff occasionally Fair enough. so I'm, I'm i'm reserving judgment but i'm also really, really excited for it good yeah. so let us know what your current favorite games on the switch are that came out this year and what games coming out later this year might dethrone that game and we'll see and maybe we'll read your comments next next week yeah when we'll be back but hey now for some news and the first thing I want to point out is that Slay the Spire is getting some free DLC, which includes Woo. a fourth playable character and a bunch of quality of life improvements. Yes. Um, like, you won't run into... So there are random events in this game. Uh, so with this new improvement, you won't run into the cleric, for example, if you don't have enough money to pay for the services. So Because once you run into a random encounter, they no longer appear for that entire run. So you basically won't be getting relics that will be useless and won't mm. be getting events that will be useless. Uh, which is really awesome, and I'm super excited for that new fourth character. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, would, have we confirmed that that's coming to Switch at some point? I think. Yeah. No, it said it said coming to consoles. Cool, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's, we don't know when yet, but it is just very. This game has been in early access for so long, and they like they added the defect, the third character, in the middle of early access, hmm. um, and. We didn't like we knew more stuff was coming, but we didn't really have a sense of if they were gonna go full out characters. And 
this is really exciting that we have confirmation that they're definitely making free new characters or at least one for this game. It's yeah, that very, rules. Very cool. I also learned from Tom that you don't actually have to get all of the keys to ascend further. Dude, Casey is so good at this game, it's insane. <laughs> like she I keep hearing this. She has surpassed everyone else in the office who plays it and has been playing it for a year so quickly. It is just insane. I, it's all I do in my free time. <laughs> <laughs> There's laundry everywhere. Oh, man. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Awesome. I'm not kidding. But um, <laughs> also, the Pokemon company actually responded to all of our all of those National Dex complaints. Yeah, but maybe they shouldn't have. Which is, <laughs> yeah. What also, they say? Maybe they shouldn't have. Nothing. Uh, so this came almost more than two weeks after the initial complaints started. Mm -hmm. So first of all, it's kind of a late response. Um, this is from uh, Junichi Masada, um, I believe, anyway. This is what he said. Uh, Thank you to all of our fans for caring so deeply about Pokemon. Recently, I shared the news that some Pokemon cannot be transferred to Pokemon Sword and Shield. I've read all of your comments and appreciate your love and passion for Pokemon. Just like you, we are passionate about Pokemon, and each and every one of them is important to us. After so many years of developing the Pokemon video games, this was a very difficult decision for me. I'd like to make one thing clear. Even if a specific Pokemon is not available in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, that does not mean it will not appear in future games. The world of Pokemon continues to evolve. The Galar region offers new Pokemon to encounter, trainers to battle, and adventures to embark upon. We are pouring our hearts into these games, and we hope you will look forward to joining us on this new journey. Okay. So, so typical is very PR response. Yes, they, they did confirm one thing that we did assume, which is that, well, if they're not all in this game, the next games that come out will have a different batch of Pokemon included. Right. So they confirmed that, but by confirming that, did they also confirm there will not be DLC that adds yeah, more? Yeah, because he didn't, he didn't say it may appear on in this one in the future yeah. he specifically said in the next game so yeah. this when, sounds very much like hey it's it's just too much we mm -hmm. we created too many damn monsters when nintendo yeah. put out that e3 direct centered around smash brothers last year and it had the keywords everyone is here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was a big deal yeah. because it was special that doesn't have to be the thing that goes to everything. Yeah. Like, not everything has to be every, everyone is here. I understand that you want them to, but like with a franchise like Pokemon, there's just too many everyone's. It's mm -hmm. just too much. It's I just agree. a lot. And I know that like people don't want to hear that. It's heartbreaking, and they're just like, just delay it and put them all in there. But I, I'm okay with these people go going, this is the game we want to make, and this is what it is, and we'll get the other ones next time. Yeah. I've, I've been seeing a lot of like little like Mimi comics. It's like someone's like, they're not putting... I don't know, Chandelure in the game. It's like, have you ever used a Chandelure? It's like, no, but I want it. Yeah. Like, that kind of well, thing. Well, that's that's sort of like, like a hoarder mentality, yeah. right? It's well, like why I can't which, get rid of stuff at home because I'm like, well, I want to. I, I might use it someday. Yeah. Which, to be fair, literally the entire yes. point of Pokemon <laughs> yes. has been hoard them all. Yeah. Yeah, right. Get yeah. them yeah. all. <laughs> exactly. Collect them. You <laughs> need <laughs> everything. No, I, but look, I, I can understand. So like, like, they only have themselves so to play. It's the, it's the gotta catch them all. It's the tagline, yeah. They did kind of stop you using that in recent years yeah yeah but I this, think they realized how ridiculous the, the it was. setup of the world is that there's all this choice there's all this freedom all these different creatures yeah and so yeah i can understand if people are upset i, I, mm -hmm. I was a big gran no, turismo fan and when you got the sequel to sequel to gran turismo one of your favorite car car manufacturers wasn't in it you mm -hmm. you'd be upset about it for a while right yeah but, that's like and i will uh, well, yeah and i will say that uh i think this statement was too late for how thin it was. Mm -hmm. I think this yes. needed to either come sooner mm -hmm. or have more substance to it. I completely it. agree. Because what they did was essentially say, hey, we've got a message for you because we've been listening to mm -hmm. you. Sorry. Yes. And that was the whole thing, for which sure. is fair because they're standing by their point and they don't want to mm -hmm. change. They, they can't change for whatever reason. They don't want to do they, they can't acquiesce I, yeah but and i appreciate them communicating that but the fact that it came so late and had so little substance essentially took this this anger that people had sort of started to get over and yeah. just like reignited it and I suddenly wish, the narrative was like well you're not saying anything at all i wish they had explained it like if yeah. he had said like hey we have created such a huge lineup of creatures it is it is going forward it'll be impossible for us to include them all in a single game but we hear you for fans of the ones that aren't in this one you know there'll be there'll be more games in the future like yeah. something that gives a little bit more of an explanation to as to how it is now difficult to support and also bring in a bring out a game this year for yeah. people um 
Because without that explanation, it sounds like because we like to make more money, mm-hmm. right? Like that's what people will interpret this as. Sure. And I yeah. and I I really do like I I think all the complaints like we've been saying I think all the complaints are valid and the kind of frustration and anger is is coming mm-hmm. from a place that makes sense. What I will say is I really don't appreciate people being like they're just lazy, mm. and that's the lazy dev kind of trope complaint I is hate that. is so not. It, it, it shows such a lack of awareness of how hard and time consuming and expensive game development is. And it's almost, it's very unfair because developers are never just like, or at least a developer like the Pokemon company is not just like, eh, we just won't do that, right? Mm-hmm. Like they, they weigh these decisions because they really care about this stuff too. And to just be like, oh, they're just lazy. They could just do it is, is ignoring a lot of factors mm-hmm. that play into this that are oftentimes outside of those developers' control. Yeah, no, totally. I, I mean, I, I try to be completely level-headed about these things and be pro-consumer as often as possible. I also think that there are times where it's like calling an entire development studio lazy or really like any group of creative people on earth or individual creator. Uh, it, it shows like sort of a fundamental lack of understanding of how difficult it is to make things. Yeah. Just on any level, cooking dinner is difficult. You know, like it's, I, there's, I know when I'm lazy when I make dinner and I know when I try, there's a discernible difference between those two things. My baby doesn't know the difference, but I do, you know, like if I'm just like, tonight for dinner, we're having microwave broccoli and a hot dog, go to sleep. I, I had microwave broccoli and a can of tuna the other day for dinner. Then, Good job, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd well, you say like I came over and cooked it? <laughs> Good job, Brian. Um, there's, yeah, there's also you know it's hard to make to make stuff, and so to call people lazy, I think is like it sucks. There's also a writer that I follow on Twitter that I I can't. I think his name was Ben Sledge. Uh, he's written at least freelance for IGN before. Mm-hmm. Um, he was talking about how he actually was a little excited. I don't fully agree with this, but I thought it was an interesting perspective where he was saying, uh, well. This is actually kind of exciting because now every new Pokemon game is going to have its own meta where Mm -hmm. the Pokemon company and Game Freak can kind of pick and choose what Pokemon they want to create a certain competitive atmosphere or like difficulty spike within the game where if they say, okay, we really want this dragon trainer to be really, really difficult, like let's make the things that are good against the Pokemon he has like fewer right yeah. and I, that that's obviously frustrating because then maybe your pokemon your favorite pokemon aren't there for balance reasons which is kind of weird but at the same time it does actually allow them to kind of <laughs> funnel players in a direction that they would like where they otherwise couldn't if you could just take your you know gen one starter that you loved and have trained up to level 99 and poured into the game immediately like mm-hmm. that's not here's, available here's could, the thing too like in competitive play you can't use this pokemon anyway right, right. you have to that you can only use pokemon that you get get from the game it, yeah it'd be yeah. funny if they did like a thanos snap where all the uh, electric pokemon of this world are wiped out and <laughs> here come the water pokemon taking over the world no look but at the same time i i feel like Fans, fans voicing their concerns over something, and fans lamenting something being taken away that they love is 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 valid, yeah, right? Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, and yeah, the definitely. developers and the publishers that fund them need to serve an audience, and so you have to be smart how you know you don't back yourself in a corner. And it, mm-hmm. it is like using the Gran Turismo example. Like once you get to like a thousand three hundred car models. And and trying to repeat that same approach for the next generation of consoles where it takes four times as long to model yep. a car and four times as long to make an accurate track, right? And there's expensive um, licenses and it, everything. Yeah. You will eventually run into a wall where you go, well, we can't sustain this. And so it, developers and publishers have to be very open and outspoken uh, and talk to their audience about why they can't do a certain thing if they can. Here's, yeah. here's a hypothetical question just to think about, too, and, and this does not need a real answer, but... Uh, Obviously, the ideal world answer to the question is both. But would you rather have them start limiting and not including old Pokemon, certain old Pokemon, Mm -hmm. or stop making new Pokemon? Right? Like, in in a perfect world, your answer is I'd like them to have both of those things. I'd like them to make friends and have everything. But if you had to choose one, just think about that. Like, Like, honestly, which would you pick? And I don't even... I don't know fully my answer yet, but mm-hmm. it's just an interesting thing to think about because I yeah. think that's a world that they live in and probably a question they've had to ask themselves internally. No, it's tough because it's like every every Pokemon is somebody's favorite, right? Even the ones you don't think so. And it's, the same thing happens with Smash Brothers, like I mentioned before. Uh, someday somebody is going to reboot that franchise and they're going to look back and they're going to go, 
81 characters <laughs> okay well let's let's like kill let's kill off some of these and the people are gonna be like i love jigglypuff and mm -hmm. they'll be right of jigglypuff see how no, jigglypuff see? is definitely that, i just threw that, that total reboot. random one and like <laughs> right at the table someone's like how dare you <laughs> don't you dare i love jigglypuff um and for me jigglypuff can get shot in the street oh my god <laughs> out Whoa, here Brian. i don't care, I don't care about jigglypuff. goodness she'll gracious. survive she's made of marshmallow i think She'll be okay. But no, someone <laughs> one day is going to be like that, that, you know, there's too many things here. It's too hard to make. Let's start fresh with a new roster of 20 characters. Let's bring it back to the basics. You know, we'll go back to wh what this franchise used to be all about. And I think that's going to happen with a lot of our favorite things someday because it's the things just get too bloated and they have to be reined in. Mm -hmm. And that's it's not always the prettiest situation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you got to shoot. It sucks for someone, yeah. right? Yeah. It will mm -hmm. always suck for someone. Right. And that. It sucks if it's you. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I'm not too salty about it because they already confirmed Charizard and Vulpix and Sword and Shield. So the rest <laughs> can go screw himself. What about Jigglypuff? <laughs> Don't, care. Care. <laughs> Don't care. Don't <laughs> care. Uh, I have to run to a Comic Con meeting, guys. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. Bye, Bye Brian. Brian. Sorry I left on such a weird note of murdering one of your favorite Pokemon. Well, now we can really talk about Yeah, go for it. You can bring, fake gator and bring her back to life. It's a real alligator. Yep. Mm -hmm. How dare you? Real. All right. I love you guys. Have Bye. a great have a great uh, holiday weekend. So long. Love you, Brian. Bye, Brian. Go raid all the stuff. So if you watch that video comics. with the gator, you can see the string that pulls it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, we have so much news, news left and not a whole lot of time. All right. Sorry, let's what dig in. Do? Let's crank right, through so it. We, we really went off on Pokemon. Yeah, yes. no, I know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so about sorry. That, I, will, I will try and stop talking about this. It's just it keeps getting dragged on. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, uh, Damon X Machina developers came back with a feedback trailer where they address everyone's feedback from that demo from last year. Uh, definitely watch that; it's very interesting. It's, Is it it's faster? Kind of cool. I mean, a couple of things. Yeah, a couple. Of they things. speeded. They tuned it up a little bit yeah. in certain spots. That, must, that was my one. It's my one. really yeah. cool that they they took this approach to developing mm -hmm. this new game. Yeah. I also just appreciate that they didn't just say we listened to your feedback. They gave us a two and a half minute trailer where they give side by side mm -hmm. comparisons of exactly what they changed. Kind mm -hmm. of like That's what really they cool. did with Bloodstain, where they showed how the graphics changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm very much a fan of developer transparency increasing in terms of like making yes. changes. Yep. I, I, I'm all for this. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. That's cool. They also announced a. I'm, I keep saying they. The very, giant ants. Yeah. The giant ants also announced Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town remake is coming with to the Nintendo Switch. And this was a 2003 Game Boy Advance game. Yes. And they are also going to incorporate elements of more Friends of Mineral Town as well. Um, I this will this be one. tricky in the U.S. Because mm. the the relationship between Marvel and Natsume went into two, two different directions. Natsume. Mar Marvelous. Marvelous, yeah. Okay. There, that's a, what did I say? You Marvel. said Marvel. Marvel, marvelous. Uh, yeah, Mar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, marvelous owns Bokujo Monogatari, which is the Harvest Moon that you guys remember. Yeah. Natsume owns the U.S. name Harvest Moon, and so uh, re-releasing this in the U.S. is going to be tricky. Either cool. these two companies make up and bring this bring this back together, or it might have to launch under the story of season's name or something else. Hmm. And so it's it is a weird this is going to be a weird situation. I'm really curious to see what happens. I hope it uh, resolves itself uh, in a positive way for US players. Hmm. Because that's a good game. Yeah. All the old Harvest Moon games are really really charming and good. Mm -hmm. Except the new the, the trailer made it look like a mobile game like the other kind of bad Harvest Moon games that have come out mm -hmm. recently, Aww. but so I'm skeptical yeah, the yeah. unfortunately. Didn't look that great. No. To be honest. Well, maybe it's less of a remake and more of a re-release. Yeah, well, maybe. But yeah. Game Boy Advance graphics is definitely better than that. They're definitely new. You just had a game with a black and white cat jumping in a mech suit. <laughs> You're right. Stop it. You're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there's also um, the final Splatoon 2 Splatfest ever is coming <gasps> July 18th. This shocked me. Yeah, it I, did. Like, you know, Thank you, Janet, for the tip. I, Janet brought up that when they announced the, uh, the the cadence of the game releases that they said, hey, this, you know, uh, two years of support for Splatfest, I think, mm -hmm. is what it was. But I never I never thought about the fact that the community, that, that you would be able to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like the community is too active for that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does. That's weird. It's still very popular. I mean, the only the only thing I can imagine is that there is a... That there's an like somebody calls an audible last moment and said like ha we're just kidding there'll be more in the future or or there's some sort of DLC or change or they're announcing Splatoon three. 
I mean, that's the thing is if like put this is totally hypothetical, but put yourself in that world where mm-hmm. Splatoon three they decide they're going to start making Splatoon three, right? Mm-hmm. This is all all theory and fake, yeah. but. They start decide that. The entire studio starts working on Splatoon 3. Do you just have one dude in your office who's just making Splatfest still? <laughs> like, there's just one guy who's not working on Splatoon 3. I, Instead, he's making Splatfest. No, Fest? it's not that much work to do the Splatfest, right? Like God, they somebody's got to do it. They I build mean, a system for it. This somebody's got to make stage. that stuff. Huh? This one has a new stage. Yeah, okay, that's cool. well, yeah. When, and they when have it's... to write dialogue for... Um, when Pearl it's, and Marina. When yeah. it's that big, there is definitely a portion of the team working on it. Right. But at the same time, any of these new stages, of course, you can bring back in Splatoon 3. So it's not like you're starting from scratch for the sequel, <laughs> right? Like yeah. iterating of, on Splatoon is, you know, obviously you upgrade a lot. You create some new levels, but it's more about the campaign development now, mm-hmm. right? Isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know. That that was surprising to me. Mm-hmm. This really crept up on me. I, I stopped playing Splatoon, not because I don't like it. I love that game, but it's just too much, right? Mm-hmm. There are too, mon- too many new games coming out. Yeah. So very if sad. you're interested to participate, it's going to be Chaos versus Order. In other words, Pearl versus Marina. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is reminiscent of the first Splatoon, where their last Splatfest was Callie versus uh, Mar- Marie. Yeah, Callie versus Marie. And... Um, Marie beat Callie by like 20 points. So if you really care about who comes out on top, you should play in this blog. All right. Yeah. And um, also out this week, next is What Remains of Edith Finch comes out on the 4th. Very cool, heavy game. Did I play that one? Is it where you walk around a town and they're little sparkles and they tell you a story? Is that the one? No. No. Which one was Is that? that the Rapture one? That's the Rapture one. What Remains of Edith Finch is a game where you go through a house and... They're little sparkle you, things, and they tell a story. No, you, you go to different, like, people who lived in the house, like, rooms, and then you, like, basically experience parts of their lives, and sometimes, okay. usually, I think, the way they die. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. Is okay. a pretty heavy I, game about a family that has been cursed, I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I know I Janet didn't, likes it a lot play this yet you know yeah. i've played games like gone home and, and yeah it's um, in that it's in that vein yeah. the, the walking simulator if you okay. want to call it yeah that. but uh it's They're basically very, the the new visual novels yeah, yeah and it's a very well-loved game so yeah. this is this is a v- definitely one to look at if that's your if your your okay. jam it's out um on the fourth for 1999 mm-hmm. and speaking of visual novels in the vein of like literally everything mm-hmm. is coming to switch uh clonade which is a 2004 visual novel is coming to the switch Cool. And, or actually already came to the Switch on, uh, or did I not update no, my tomorrow. notes correctly? It comes out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. For forty four <laughs> ninety nine. But this is a really old anime visual novel that I have not played. I have not watched any anime spinoffs, but it's one of those things that gets mentioned in anime circles a lot mm-hmm. that I should So again, we're missing Miranda. Check out. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> needed her for edible Pokemon, yeah. turkey Pokemon, and this. Yes. Yeah, sorry. We did. Whoops. But yeah, that's the thing that's coming out. Also, Stranger Things 3, the game, the third season, is coming out yes. on the 4th for 1999. And it's like a, it looks like a co-op beat up, beam up. Yeah, it's similar to that. Uh, I talked to the developers back at GDC, and they said it's actually like a little bit inspired by Goof Troop. So there's some oh, like, okay. ah, yeah. it, there's some puzzle, and not like don't think directly that mm-hmm. game, but there's some puzzly things in there too. And mm-hmm. uh, I will give a spoiler warning, though, not for it now. It spoils the game. It is the entire season of the show plus more. Yeah. So if you are a fan of the show, probably watch <laughs> the season. They're launching at the exact same time on Thursday, July 4th. Uh, so probably watch the season of the show first and then play the game. Yeah. So this is funny because like finding a reviewer for a game like that <laughs> yeah. is, is tough for us. Oh, because yeah. a lot of people who are into Stranger Things, they don't want the, the, sh- the season spoiled by playing the game. And at the same time, the people who are reviewing the season for us aren't always gamers and they're, mm-hmm. you know, they, they've watched the season and have to write a review and may not have time to play the game. Yeah, they're, they're busy so covering like, the show. Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's a really interesting conundrum. But we've got somebody who's playing through it, so we should have a nice take on it. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And we also have a Dream Daddy Dead Rector's Cut. Dead Rector's mm-hmm. Cut. Dead Rector's Cut. I had a ton mm-hmm. of fun with all of the puns on this product page yesterday. Yeah, I was just man. God, they're too many. <laughs> Wait like till you get to Red Faction. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm into it. But uh, July 2nd <laughs> for fourteen ninety nine, where mm-hmm. you create a dad and then date dads. That's what the game is about. This is a game that sounds like a joke. It sounds like a total make fun of it self sort of thing. And it actually is like a like a quality dating sim visual yeah. novel. Like yeah. it is it is well, well loved. All right. 
it sounds like a goof, but again, if you're into those games, it's actually good. Like, good. Okay. And then we have Red Faction Gorilla Remastered, like Remars, Remarsdered, like the planet Mars, that red planet. That the faction is also that on. on July second for fifty nine ninety nine. It's good though. Red Faction is good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still some of the best like destruction the, yeah. in any game. You ever. can blow up stuff for real. <laughs> And then yeah. while perusing the eShop, I just kind of came across this game called Ovivo, and it's a black and white platformer that comes out on that came out on July third uh, for six ninety nine. But I watched the gameplay tra- trailer, and there is a demo, and it looks really interesting. It's um, all black and white, and you play as basically a little dot, and mm-hmm. you can move between the white segments and the black segments. But when you're in a black area, gravity goes up, and when you're in a white area, gravity goes down. So it's kind of an interesting take on a platformer, mm. and the art and everything just looks like it runs really smoothly and mm-hmm. it's very interesting looking. So just something to to possibly check out. Yep, yep. It's my interest. Yeah, I think it's cool. So I think we have time for maybe like one question block. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so from Robin Friend, it says, which Nintendo character would make the best roommate and which one would be the worst? Which Nintendo character would make the best roommate, which one the worst? So obviously the worst one has to be one of the farters. Wario. Wario. Mm. Right? Yeah, probably. He would eat all your food and fart. Or Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong's fine. He's kind of cool. But he's a. He, you'd be sharing an apartment with a giant gorilla. Hmm, that's true. And the best roommate would be Luigi because he has a vacuum. Yeah, mm-hmm. there we go. That's actually. Yeah. I don't think we can come up with yeah, no. better than I that. I think it's the, the best solution. Yeah. Plus, you know, he he will never. He'll always be in the background and you don't have to <laughs> worry about him taking your glory. That said, yeah. I think Donkey Kong never is probably a girl. pretty bad roommate, yeah. too. Donkey Kong is a bad roommate. Leaving banana Kirby peels also everywhere. just... <laughs> no, like Kirby is great. everything. Kirby someone, will be terrible. Someone else... I can't... I'm sorry. I can't remember your name. Someone else asked in our um, Facebook post, if Kirby ate a businessman, would he wear a suit and go to work? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what happened to me. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Mm-hmm. No, the... Um, but Kirby... Kirby... I see here here's my argument for Kirby real quick cuz I I'm stuck on this one now. Uh in the SNES Kirby's and maybe the later ones too, I think, when he eats the food, you can share. He shares still. He's a okay. kind spirit with that. Oh, so, all right, pair. Fine. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, keep an, going. He's an artist. He paints, yeah. right? So Kirby? he would Yeah. Oh, he does. He would have like a, uh, you know, but, but he, he eats no. everything. And then he shares. All Kirby does is suck in everything. Your furniture is gone. Your food is gone. Your <laughs> friends are gone. But then he Suddenly he has couch. your friend's hair because he ate your friend. And that he has sounds, your friend's powers. That sounds He's like probably a murderer. He'll I'll eat give you, you that. and he'll is have a little bow tie. Are you talking about the thing? Yes, it's exactly the thing. He No, he's uh, he's an assimilator. He's a, he's a Borg. Okay, last yeah. question. Uh, from Devin from Provo, Utah. Uh, MVC, I wanted to know the most emotional you've ever gotten over a video game, warranted or unwarranted. I ask this because of two personal examples. One is warranted when I played, I don't know what this is, Dragon Cancer. I don't. That Dragon Cancer. Yeah. It's a video game called mm-hmm. That Dragon Cancer. That Dragon Cancer? Yeah, literally that about dragon, cancer. That Dragon, comma, yeah. cancer. Wow. Mm-hmm. I ugly cried pretty much the entire game. I think the, the punctuation threw me off. Mm-hmm. Uh, two is unwarranted. When I was 20 years old, my older brother raced my Pokemon Silver game that I played when I was 12 to 14. I couldn't help it. I cried for a good 20 minutes straight. That's right. I was 20 years old. Hmm. No, I'm that so one's warranted. I'm so sorry that that happened. Yeah, that's totally that's warranted. That's totally warranted. Like, come on. Mm. Um, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I would say... Um, Games. I mean, the two games that immediately come to mind. Like, I, I, I haven't encountered a. Did I just pull out your wire? That's fine. I don't need it. I, I haven't encountered a, um, a game where I like I outright sobbed or broke down. Like, there's certainly been movies and like you know plays. Like, the end of Hamilton is is pretty mm. <laughs> hits you right. The whole orphanage thing and all that. Anyway, um, Inside is a game that I think, like, it was a pretty emotional story and it made you feel all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then I feel Shadow of the Colossus was really cool. Mm. The way it wrapped up, um, you know, like, I hadn't played a game where I felt guilt before. Um, as with Shadow of the Colossus, I thought that was pretty well done. And then going way back, I love the ending of Link to the Past. 
Hmm. I just, I, there's just something that gets me every time when the game wraps up and it's perfectly synced with the music when he puts the Master Sword back and then it does this, this more lighthearted kind of tour of the entire lands. Um, and you see all the characters in action and all that. I always that that gets me emotionally. It doesn't make me break out in tears, but I I just it's a little goosebump moment. You still think I don't know. I think I, I I I've never really I've never cried at a game, but I also don't like just I'm a little bit of a robot. I don't mm-hmm. cry at many things. I've only ever cried in a single movie in a single play, and that's yeah. it in my entire life. Um, Final Fantasy X. You play that. No, I have not played Final yep, Fantasy X. That's, a, that's got a moment. Uh, I think I got a Seven little emotional a in Persona 5, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, and I think I, I wrote about this recently, but Outer Wilds had a really big emotional impact on me, but I was not emotional in the moment with mm-hmm. that game. So I think that's something. Outer Wilds not being The Outer Worlds, which is the RPG from Obsidian coming out later. Outer Wilds is the game from Mobius Digital that is a space exploration game on oh. PC. And Xbox right now. The end of Uncharted. Mm. Oh man, I don't want to spoil it, but the know. you know the the end of Uncharted had had quite the moment in it. Mm. I felt like uh, as a dad, that one really got me. That was great. <laughs> and in general, I mean, that company does a wonderful job. The Last of Us is mm-hmm. also pretty impactful game. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, generally games games aren't that sophisticated in 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 storytelling where they can. You know, where, where they usually have this big impact on me, like through visuals and through being there and being impressed with the world, like that. As I said, like you get a lot of goosebump moments in those games. Final Fantasy always has been good with kind of character development, but not the, not the kind of super. Actually, yeah. I I tear up a lot for very very small things. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> no, but um, this I mean I like I like cry during the last Pokemon movie. Like I just mm. okay get emotional but also get into it i'm gonna get a little bit heavy for a second but um my mom passed away in 2011 so like any game that deals Mm. with mom death just like gets to me very easily like i bawled during pokemon the pokemon movie with zora arc because the whole plot is about how zora has lost his mom i was just like a wreck yeah but god of war at the very beginning um that got me really emotional. Mm. No, that makes sense. So any any time it actually connects to your real life, like yeah, that, that makes anything sense. that yeah. I can I can relate to, which yeah. I I empathize very easily to everything. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just get teary eyed a lot. I mean, I hear the Monster Hunter like world main music theme in a new trailer, and I get teary eyed. So dude, you know. that music is so good though. <laughs> I, I remember my daughter bawled at the end of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I forget which one, and I'm like, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And she's like, "It's over." Oh. <laughs> and she was when she was younger. She was just so desolated that she couldn't experience it again. Mm. Um, that she completely broke into tears. That's Aww. so cute Aww. though. A little different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's about all the time we have. Uh, we are. It is 4th of July. Guys, have a great weekend. Make some burgers, make some uh, hot dogs, whatever you, uh, yeah. you, my American friends like to do. Drink some beer, look at the I, sky. I will do both and have lots of beer. Yeah, um, that's my plan too. Yep. What about you, Tom? I am going to a barbecue thingy, but I'm a vegetarian, so I will not be drinking hot dogs and or eating hot dogs. Are you going to be a ha- – what are you going to eat? Like a I can't believe it's not a sausage? A lot of chips. Lots probably. of chips? Do you have like an impossible burger? No, I don't know. We'll see. Have you had those? Play it by ear. Probably an ear yeah. of corn too. Have you had one of them falafel no, burgers? Well, the impo- I, I, this is getting into a whole other tangent. <laughs> the impossible burgers and Beyond Meat or whatever the other one is, is like a little bit, they're targeted towards meat eaters yeah. who don't want to eat meat anymore. Okay. But I've been a vegetarian since I was three. Oh. So like, I don't even know what a burger tastes like. So I have try. no reason to like want one that tastes like a real thing. Tastes like salty falafel burgers. Mm, That's okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can watch NBC Nintendo Voice Chat every Thursday at 3 p.m. on YouTube, IGN.com, or your famous favorite podcasting platform. This episode is going up a little bit early. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, this is the only place you can get the thing. <laughs>